Welcome to the Jobs and Work Podcast. If you're like most Americans, you spend a significant amount of your time working. In fact, we spend more time at our jobs than anywhere else. But how often do we really talk about work in America? On this podcast, the Work for Change team will. Work for Change LLC is a team of social scientists, thought leaders, and digital storytellers who dig into the critical issues affecting American workers and workplaces today. Our podcast is co-hosted by Dr. Kendra Jason and myself, Dr. Chris Maycumber. We'll also bring guests onto the show who reflect the diversity of the American workforce. We are so excited for you to join us as we lead the efforts to humanize the workplace by building dignity and equity into jobs, work, and organizations. Please subscribe to the podcast and share us with your friends and family. You can learn more about Work for Change at workforchangellc.com. Hello and welcome to episode 35 of the Jobs and Work with Work for Change video podcast. Today I have special guest Kirsten Griggs. Welcome to the podcast. Hi, thanks for having me. Thank you for being here. So let me just jump into Kirsten's bio really quickly so that we can get this conversation started. Uh, I am so excited to have Kirsten on the show. I actually contacted her months ago and she agreed to be uh, on the podcast. So Kirsten is the founder and CEO of Trap Recruiter LLC. This is a recruiting, consulting, and career coaching firm. She has over 20 years of experience in talent accusation. She's passionate about helping organizations attract, select, and retain the best people, including underrepresented candidates, as well as helping job seekers find their voice in the hiring process. She does this through consulting, facilitating workshops, hosting training sessions, webinars, coaching job seekers, and more. So I'm so pleased to have her here because she has been featured as an expert on multiple platforms, including Diversity Jobs in her site, BBC World Service Radio, Madam Nor. the list goes on, all right? So um, (laughs) you can see her bio and all her handles right below, but I really want to get into this, um, this conversation. So Kirsten, I always have to start with the the question as a small business owner, what led you to start Trap Recruiter? A layoff. So okay. it wasn't intentional. Uh, I feel like I was being pushed that way, at mm-hmm. least to move along and get out of an organization. Probably around, starting around like 2012, I was given the opportunity to leave an organization that I had really built my career at. Like that's where I really matured. That's where I laid the foundation for everything that I do now. So it was no hard feelings. I'd actually transitioned out of talent acquisition department Mm -hmm. into the business as an operations leader because I was being groomed to be a project and then a program manager uh, for Mm -hmm. one of our larger contracts uh, in the cyber security uh, Mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. But the way companies are, especially when they're large, uh, what one vice president has in mind yes. is not necessarily what the business has in mind for itself. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. it created these positions for certain, you know, certain people uh, like myself, there were four of us. And we, when the business started to consolidate and things started to change, um, the person who had initially created these types of roles to, again, to, to develop people, he was actually promoted and then someone else was brought in and they did not, they did not see a, see a value in having like a staffing manager type mm-hmm. of role. Uh, didn't mm-hmm. understand why we had and literally had a seat at the table in the boardroom, you mm-hmm. know, why we were kind of this liaison between the HR and recruiting departments and the business because mm-hmm. it, because it, it uh, really lifted the veil. Uh, yeah. And it really showed where the issues were, and especially me having been in talent acquisition and knowing what those pain points were and mm-hmm. also having great relationships with the business that I was now supporting, yeah. I could see things from both ends. Yeah. So 
that ended. And then one of the things I did was I ran something called the, what we call the assignments panel, which was our internal mobility. And mm -hmm. I just didn't feel comfortable putting myself on the assignments panel to move yeah. to a new position. Cause what could I really do besides yeah. go back into recruiting? And yeah. I didn't want to do that. So mm -hmm. I said, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and find something else to do. Mm -hmm. So I, I left the organization. I had a job in less than 30 days. Uh, again, contracting, because again, I'm looking for something to do. Right. Uh, I was in a unique position because I was beginning and I was doing, I had been doing work that was what would now become talent acquisition operations and more widely accepted and more widely utilized in yeah. corporate America. It wasn't, mm -hmm. a lot of folks weren't thinking about who was doing yeah. the metrics. They weren't mm -hmm. thinking about who was doing training. They weren't thinking mm -hmm. about who was picking systems and right. why that person could, should be, you know, a, a former recruiter, someone who right. understands how we do it. So yeah. I took another recruiting job, but again, it was more project-based. It was like yeah. train, moving people from one location to another. So yeah. I got to do these fun, interesting things. Then that contract ended. And again, it was like right before Thanksgiving, the hiring man, the manager that I had at the time, she literally was like crying. <laughs> she had to tell me that I didn't have a job anymore. I was like, it's fine. Like, calm down. Again, I went home. I did a phone screen for like Thanksgiving weekend. They were like, you're hired. I said, cool. Yes. I got another job. Yeah. <laughs> it was supposed to be a contract. Again, yes. it was supposed to be a short project of me just yes. doing some work, getting getting some folks who were cleared, but did not necessarily want to do full-time work, yeah. you know, get them to be on what we call this flex pool. So we could, mm -hmm. when someone went out for extended periods of time, we could just pop them in there. Mm -hmm. And again, businesses do what they like to do from the top. And another transition happened at a large company and they said, you have to become employees or you have to leave. Mm -hmm. And I took the job, you know, this was like, maybe a month into me doing the project, I took the role uh, doing, you know, continuing to, to manage this program or this project. And then that changed and evolved. Uh, and then I went, and then I was absorbed by talent acquisition operations. Mm -hmm. And then I led that part of the division, but mm -hmm. I got a call from the company, from someone that I had worked with at the company where, again, I built my career and they said, yeah. I need an TA ops manager cool this was 2016 yeah uh I need to ask manager I said okay um I went over did not know that within the first month I would be the most tenured TA person on the team yeah. because everyone mm -hmm. everyone resigned mm -hmm. uh, the company was being um acquired by another mm -hmm. one and mm -hmm. I pretty much was hired to come in fix the yeah. reporting um get things straight in terms of how projects were named, how the system worked, how we did reports, all that stuff. And then they didn't need me anymore. And mm -hmm. I got laid off, but I needed mm -hmm. to work. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, so again, I didn't really know anything about starting a business. Yeah. Uh, I did not have those types of mentors, you know, yeah throughout my career. I mean, mm -hmm. I know some extremely accomplished and extremely successful people, but they always worked in corporate America. They right. always worked for a company. Mm -hmm. So I never, and in my mind, if I wanted to be my own business, I had to be a recruiting, a staffing company. And I did not want to do that. I, yeah. I, didn't, I didn't have that desire. Yeah. So yeah. I went ahead and again, call some of my friends and they're like, here's a contract here. You know, here's yep. a contract, contract here. here. And I'm going yep. back and Keep forth. Mm -hmm. yep. And then I took a role at one of, again, another large company that was a competitor of the other ones I had worked at. And it lasted mm -hmm. nine days. I was miserable. Yeah. Like I was miserable every day. Yeah. It got worse and worse. Like wow. no one even knew I had a job. <laughs> it, was, it was that bad. And then mm -hmm. I just said, I can't do this any. I said, I, I really can't do this anymore. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And that was it. And I've been so blessed and so fortunate. Um, haven't always had a lot, you know, in terms of money, like especially what I'm used to. Um, money, been, 
Yeah, I'm sorry, money, it sounds like opportunity too. Like opportunity is a huge resource it seems like you've had as well. Yes, mm-hmm. I've had, I've had, it's, I've had abundance of opportunities because of my network and yes. because of the people that I'm connected to. Mm-hmm. But again, there's all, there's still that mindset that you work for someone, you know, yes. there's still that mindset no. that you be attached to an established, well-known branded yep. company. Yep. And there are folks that I am connected to now, obviously, right. who have started their own businesses, are very successful, do consulting in a way that is, you know, not what it was when I was growing up. Because, mm-hmm. you know, my parents are baby boomers. And mm-hmm. back then, if you called yourself a consultant, that pretty much meant you were unemployed. Yeah, yeah, I remember those. I, <laughs> like, that was a bad word. So it was. I'm, I, I'm consulting. You're, yeah. you're whimsical, you're unreliable. You, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you work for like a Deloitte or, yeah. or something like that, then you were like, mm. mm-hmm. they're like, yeah. <laughs> so, so it was, you know, it, it was a lot of that unlearning and things like yeah. that. But I, I kept with me a lot of the things that I learned um, and that, that I was told as I was being mentored. And I have one VP that I used to support who had been a small business owner again. And his he was so successful in tech that he was acquired. Like his company was acquired by one mm-hmm, of the companies mm-hmm, that I supported. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so he had, you know, luxury and freedom. Mm-hmm. that because he had designed his life right. in a certain way, if, right. if he didn't want to work for a minute, it he was okay. And he told me, he said, the minute you get into your mind and that you accept that you don't need these people and that they need you, you will be free. And yeah. I never understood what he meant because he would yeah. tell me, like he would even say, he's like, you're still there at the company yeah. I worked at for eight years. He's like, why are you still there? He's like, it's time to go. It's time to go. He's like, yeah. the minute, he said, the minute that they know that you know that mm-hmm. you don't have to work there, mm-hmm. you're going to be free. Mm-hmm. And I took that mindset and I said, I'm, I'm going to be free. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. And it's been the best experience. Like I said, just not, I, I've been you know, I've had my lights cut off. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I've had to sleep in a hotel just so I could do work the next mm-hmm. day because, again, mm-hmm. it was going to take me 24 hours to get my lights turned back on mm-hmm. because I forgot to pay the bill or I had to use that money to mm-hmm. do something else, like mm-hmm. stay in my house, mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> or yeah. maybe yeah. I want to eat today or yeah. I need gas money. So, you know, yeah. I'm going to have to rearrange something. Yeah. And I don't share that kind of stuff a lot um, mm-hmm. with people. Um, and it's not because I don't think they can take some value from it. Like I might share little tidbits about, you know, things that are kind of surface level, but I've been extremely cautious and protective of the energy that comes around me. Oh yeah, me too. People trying to, to take things from me. So, you know, the way I present being in the business that I'm in, the way that I present has a lot to do with how serious people will take me, like to yes. be quite, to be honest. Uh, and mm-hmm. I, I started down that journey very early on too, mm-hmm. um, because I was a little bit ashamed at first when I said, I'm going to start my business and I'm not working. And I was still yeah. doing stuff on the that. internet. You know, I was still writing, yeah. you know, but I wasn't getting paid for that kind of stuff. I mm-hmm. was still showing up and doing things for folks, you know, doing trainings and, you know, doing resume workshops and stuff like that. And that was money I was, I was paying for out of my pocket, like right. getting there, you know, yeah. my time, yeah. um, you know, pouring into people. And it was, it was becoming a lot. And I got a call from a friend of mine who was doing his own like job fairs. Mm-hmm. And he said, my speaker had to go out of town on a business trip. Can you help me out? And I said, I think we should have a phone call before I do this. Yeah. He was like, oh, no problem. And he was like, oh, what's up, girl? You're not a scene forever, blah, blah, blah. And he thinks he's thinking we're just going to chat and you yeah. know, shoot the stuff. Yeah, so, yeah, because you're the homegirl, right? <laughs> yeah. No, because this is someone, again, I had known for years. Yeah, because that's what I'm saying. You had known. I was like, yeah, yeah. And he's like, and I said, um, 
what do you want me to talk about? He's like, oh, whatever you want. He was like, he's like, you're, he's like, you're good. You're good. He was like, you know, I follow you on, on, on social media. I see your LinkedIn, you know, you got these recruiter problems. Like, he's like, oh, that's funny. He's like, oh God, that stuff's so great. He's like, just, just talk about anything you want. I was like, you want me to talk to people who are looking for a job? Correct. He's like, yes. I was like, from a recruiting and recruiter and an employer standpoint. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I said, well, I don't have a job. Mm-hmm. And he's like, what <laughs> he's like I would he's like I would have never known he was like and why do you think that matters and I was like will they take me seriously uh-huh. if you know uh-huh. if I'm if they're like you're a recruiter can you give me a job like you're a recruiter why can't you get your own job you know right. like like what my cups is you're a recruiter can you get me a job probably not <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> because I don't have one yeah so but he, he told me, he was like, that doesn't matter. You know, he was like, yeah. what you have to say is valuable. What you mm-hmm. have, you know, what mm-hmm. you bring to the table. Mm-hmm. And, you know, when I started putting some of that stuff aside, yeah. you know, it, it really, it really meant a lot to me. So, yeah, I think I went on for too long. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're fine. You know, one thing that you said really, really, a lot of things you said, but one thing in particular you said really resonated with me because at Work for Change, we have a Start Your Own Business workshop. And I was telling Kirsten, Um, You know, part of that workshop is just helping people figure out um, in their own business how to do it, because it's sort of like, like you said, it's like a black box. You don't really know what to do. We may we may not know many people who own their businesses or you only think of people who are attached to jobs. And one thing, you know, if anybody's interested, you know, this is, you know, one thing I always start before in preparation, I give people one question. It's no homework is one question. And I ask, what does freedom look like to you? Right. And I just asked them to think on that, you know, between the time they sign up until we, we, you know, we have the workshop. And so the reason why, and that's why I say it's it's so important, because when I started Work for Change, it was about a sense of freedom. When I I had that switch, like you were saying, your your um, your 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 friend, you know, you know, said about, you know, once you realize certain things about your work dynamic, right, that you are really a, a asset and a value. And until they really, you know, you know, they recognize you as that and you stop working off the whim of their decisions about you. Right. And so this was all happening during COVID-19 and all of a sudden, so it was a lot of thought work, you know, during that time. And that's really, that was really, really my leading question. And so I, you know, I'll say, and I, you know, you know, I have my own business and I really love my own business. I am still attached to my regular job, but I have a freedom in my regular job. I call it a mental freedom in my regular job now. And I can just, I can just dance through that job now because I don't feel like so much is, like you said, it's so much of my livelihood and my well-being is attached. My mental health is attached mm-hmm. to those workplace dynamics because I have created freedom through my my own business. And so since you said that and you now have track recruiter has which has been really successful since 2017. I've seen your social media, your LinkedIn. Kirsten's handles are below. So please um, become another one of her 10,000 followers that she has. Um, I don't have 10,000. Well, yeah. I on do. LinkedIn? On LinkedIn, yes, do. yeah, I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes, yes, ma'am, you do. <laughs> Oh, well, that's more so, so they can hate on me, so they can tell me, <laughs> <laughs> so they can say, you know, so, do shut you up, lady, like- you don't know what you're talking about. You have a job, <laughs> you suck. <laughs> do you feel like you've actualized that freedom in Trap Recruiter? And I'm going to tell you, so I'm going I'm to give you another thing why. I, so Kirsten's website, I love it because it's so much of your personality there, the name of your business, you know, you talk about being bougie and bearded, like all the things, you know, so much of your personality is there. I feel a sense of freedom of expression and the freedom of self and the authenticity that comes through your web page. And so when I look at your web page, I'm like, that that seems like that's somebody who's living in their freedom and authenticity. But I don't want to make that assumption. Let me let you speak for yourself. What has it been like for you? As, as the good uh, sister who is now dearly departed, Miss Whitney Houston, one of New Jersey's finest, has said, sometimes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Sometimes yes. I mm-hmm. feel that freedom. Um, more so than not now. But yes, I mean, yeah. I'm human. Yeah. And I get uh, discouraged. Yeah. I'm human, I get tired. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I'm human and I 
still weigh what I'm doing against what I'm seeing yes. and perceiving mm-hmm. other people mm-hmm. doing. Mm-hmm. And it's still, you know, it's, it's easier to talk to someone else and say, you're amazing. You're awesome. These are the things you're going to do. Here's the yeah. light that I see shining in you. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's easier to recognize those things in other people. Mm-hmm. It's not as easy to recognize them in yourself. Mm-hmm. Um, so the things that w- that I've learned this, and I, I, I'm still trying to fully, fully grasp this, like, you know, that concept of not expecting yourself from other people, like, yeah. Some mm-hmm. of the stuff that I did, I used to diminish the value of my contributions. And yeah. that's one of the things I tell job seekers, like, don't do that. Mm-hmm. I can tell, I'm, I'm good at telling them not to do that, but mm-hmm. I'm not good at, at reminding myself not to do that. Cause a lot of yeah. things that I think are normal, things I just do mm-hmm. out of just yeah. being Kirsten yeah. are not normal for other mm-hmm. people. Like mm-hmm. something as simple as saying hello to someone or have a great day, that might make someone's whole week. Like you never know, smiling at someone mm-hmm. that you pass, well, not right now, cause we got masks on, but you know, smiling <laughs> you at someone. You can see someone, the smiles, you can see it through the eyes, you can see it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm probably, I got my glasses on. I'm probably squinting and they're like, what is this little weird person? (laughs) Why are you staring at me? Why are you trying to make eye contact? Yeah. So yeah. So there's things like that, that um, I've had to remind myself. So sometimes, sometimes I, I feel free. And then in those moments when I do feel free, I mean, it's just, it's amazing. It's like, look at you, like you're free. (laughs) Like you're, you're feeling awesome. And I think that's real, like, like literally like real, real, real talk, because there is, there are ebbs and flows Mm -hmm. and for, you know, there's, it's great to have a community, having a community, having a network, having great friends, you know, but at the end of the day, you are the founder and the owner of your own business, right? Mm -hmm. And so a lot of business, small business owners, you know, you're doing it alone. I mean, you may have a team around you or you may have you know, people in place to support you, but it is, it is yours to handle alone. And I think that's why it's so great to have these different outlets, such as mentors and, and, and good friends and, and therapists, you know, to talk about these things um, so that you don't get sort of wrapped up in it and you can move forward because I've seen it a lot too. I think you make a really good point that, for so many people, it's so it's easier to pour into others and to uplift others and to empower others, even when you may not actualize that for for yourself. So we all need to like have be poured into and to be empowered and to be lifted up. Um, some of us just have you know do it more so than others, and especially I think for you, for someone like you who are you are trying to help people job seekers realize their potential you know like you say you remix their resumes and I, yes. I often talk to people about like you know when you're writing a resume you write a personal statement or you're applying for a job like you are your biggest cheerleader you like you are the you know you have to root for yourself and, and, and shout from the rooftop how great you are and so many people are like I just can't do that that's just not who I am and you know all of those things of that nature and so I, I, I just want to say that I appreciate number one your honesty in you know talking about the dynamics of you know what we deal with personally as a human being who happens to own a business <laughs> and do this work, but especially for those of us who are trying to empower and uplift and show potential to others so that they can reach the next step. It's really, really, really powerful. It's really yes. powerful. Yes, and thank you for, for the work that you do because it is it is so important and, and we need it. Um, and, and even going back to, to being a small business owner, um, again, in the beginning, I was, I was so bent I was so insistent on separating Kirsten Greggs from Trap Recruiter. Yeah, because, I understand because that. Someone, because someone implanted in my mind, when, when Trap Recruiter was just the name of a blog, it was Confessions of a Trap Recruiter. Yes. You know, when it was just a blog, and I said, well, that's going to be the name of my business because Trap is an acronym and all of that yeah. stuff. And people said, and you know, I have people telling me, no, 
don't you don't want a business name like no one's going to hire you no one's going to take you serious and like those messages so you know I had all this stuff when I first started out with Kirsten A Kirsten A Greggs the professional persona <laughs> trap recruiter yeah. the meme person yeah. you know Kirsten Aaliyah you know yeah. my middle name the personal person like I had yeah. all and I was like you know what this is too much Bring them together. But that is like, that's all me. Like mm-hmm. I can't, I can't be what my mom calls a bougie hood rat and, <laughs> and you know, and, and be talking about some soul. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what the thing is, and, and, and I, I love this point and it takes, I think it takes all of us a journey to get to that point. And I mean, and it's a journey that we continue on. I don't think we like reach it and be like, okay, this is who I am. I'm good where I am. It's like, we continuously work on how much of ourselves, our personal selves that we integrate in our business. And then especially being black women, right? You know, black women, like how much do I, you know, impute my culture and who I am? Or do I just want to be, you know, a professional slate that anybody would generically like? Um, so I, I really think that you, you've done a, a good balance. And the thing is not, you know, another, you know, piece of advice that I give, people who want to start their own business is that whatever businesses you have, you have to make it yours. You know, you have to put the essence of who you are because there are a lot of recruiters. There are a lot of consultants. There are a lot of, you know, people who do a lot of things, but people want the trap recruiter because they do want you and they do want your approach and they know you've been effective. And, and it's something about what you offer, something about your website, something about your recommendations, something about your blogs or your history or the brand that you've built. And so I really, I really appreciate the fact that you built, you built a name and a brand through your blogs and your social media. And then you carried that over into this consulting, this consultancy and it stood on its own. Even when people were just like, ah, if you should do that no, right no. <laughs> like I have a logo for for over a year because like I said it was I was trying to get a Kirsten A. Gregg's logo you know just I'm, I'm glad I learned that lesson and I'm glad that I that I tried anyway I'm glad it clicked with me that you know what I'm not for everybody um and the people that I'm for it's they're going to connect to it and you I'm know just got to be happy with that and in addition, the people you are for will pay for you. Yeah. They will pay, they will pay <laughs> a good amount for you because you are unique in that way. They're looking for something specific and not just because you're black, not just because you're a woman, not just because you're a black woman, small business owner. It's mm-hmm. all of the things that make you who you are in your business and your approach and your delivery and your results. That's what people want. And that's what people Um, pay for and so I you know that that whole game that we play with our value like what do we bring to the table will people take me seriously you know can I be my real self influences how much we want to charge for the services that we have and so that's something else that we have to work through a lot of times because once you realize your value and you can realize that you are at a top market rate doesn't mean you have to be you know you're at a top market rate for whatever population that you you know, target, then you're not selling yourself um, short. So let me ask you this, um, Kirsten. So you're in recruiting, talent acquisitions. You do both ends of the, the, you know, from people who are looking for a job to people who are looking for employers. You know, what advice would you have in general for people who are in limbo right now, coming out of COVID, you know, just in transition and, and thinking about the next thing? What general advice do you have? Be kind to yourself, number one. Yeah. Um, there are a lot of jobs available. Mm-hmm. And there are a lot of people looking for jobs. Yes, there are. <laughs> so, but that doesn't necessarily mean that those pieces fit together yeah. in terms of mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. people and the job being yeah. a fit. Yeah. yeah. So, one thing I do want people to understand is that the job search in, a, in and of itself is a job and yes. that the quicker you get to what I say, call the no, mm-hmm. your next opportunity, you know, don't, don't laser focus on like, keep, keep eggs in your basket. Yes. Yeah. You know what type of company you want to work for. Mm-hmm. You know what type of job you want to have. Mm-hmm. You know what type of work 
you want to do. You know mm-hmm. what type of impact you want mm-hmm. to make. You mm-hmm. know, you know how you want to grow your skills, what you want to learn at organization. Like have all of those things. Arm mm-hmm. yourself with those things. Mm-hmm. Present yourself in that way to those opportunities and they will be attracted to you. They will come to you. Mm-hmm. But you mm-hmm. also got to do the work. Like you yes. can't just post your resume on Indeed and think that people are going to find you. You mm-hmm. can't just have a LinkedIn profile and think people are going to Mm-hmm. Just magically know that you're available for a position unless mm-hmm. you're making it known, unless you're mm-hmm. engaging, unless you're interacting, unless you're networking. Yeah. Um, one thing I, I think people know, but they don't really know. Uh, so a lot of folks come to me and the first thing they say is, I want a resume. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> And I tell them, first and foremost, I don't write your resume. Right. So if you're looking for someone to pay, if you want to just get hand somebody a sheet of paper with yep. some, some words written on it and tell them, Hey, make this magical. I can, I can suggest some amazing resume right. writers for you, right. but that's not what I do. I right. remix resumes because the re- resume is the only part of your job search that you're going to own 100% is you, right. like you said, it, telling your narrative, mm-hmm. branding yourself, telling people who you are. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times folks don't realize that the job they got before before that the job they have you know that and the job that they're going to get likely the resume doesn't always come in the beginning you know it's it's usually hey Kendra you do um you help people you know maximize their careers can you they were like my my company is hiring someone like that um why don't you go ahead and and talk to the hiring manager um, you know, and get your resume together. And, you mm-hmm. know, that, that mm-hmm. comes later, you know, mm-hmm. like once you're already down the, down the, ro- yeah. down the rabbit hole, once you've already been connected to the opportunity, then the yeah. resume comes, yeah. you know, and yeah. I say that to say, not to <clears> say that every job has got, gotten that way, but the connection is still there. Right. So when I say know what you want, know what you're bringing to the table, know, know what you want from the organization, that's the connection you're making. Then you'll search for jobs in that right, way. Right. Based on those things. Right. And, and, and build your resume to reflect that. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for the time that we spent this morning. This has been yes. some, some great advice. I really hope that people who are looking for the next thing, you know, can, um, and, you know, employers really, you know, you know, listen to this or watch this podcast and you drop some, some really nice gems there. So I just want to remind people, just like uh, Chris and I was saying today that Work for Change, we have a starting your own business workshop this weekend coming up. It's on November 20th. And you can look at the website on work, the number four, changellc.com. We have all the information there for the starting your own business workshop. And then uh, also just continue to uh, like, share, and uh, our media posts. We're on LinkedIn, we're on Twitter, we're on Facebook, we're on, of course, you find us here on YouTube. So please like, subscribe, and share so that we can work to make the world of work better. Thank you again, Kristen. Thank you. Thanks for having me, Kim.